Okay, so I wanted to just see what you guys thought about the three Gary Ross videos that were posted online this week. Um, there was one that was just called Director's Commentary. One of them um, was all about perspective, what the perspective of the film will be like. And then the third video featured Gary answering some burning questions from fans. So seeing those videos actually had a pretty great impact on me. Um, I think it made me feel a lot more confident about the film being a faithful representation of the trilogy. Um, and it was it was cool to see just how excited Gary Ross seems to be about it all. Um, Crystal and I talked about how cute we thought he was. He just seemed really, really happy and and um, just very enthusiastic about everything. So I just wanted to see what, what you guys thought, you know, if there was anything in particular that you took away from those videos, um, if you feel better now about things, if you feel more nervous. Well, he only, I, I mean, I love to... <laughs> I know it's hard to talk as smoothly as Gary Ross. He does have that kind of amazing voice. But um, I, you know what? I guess we could talk about all three. Why don't we start with, with Lee, if you're there from The Hob. Why don't you get first crack at this, and then we'll go around the room quickly. Um, okay, thanks, uh, Adam. I, it was <laughs> very, very interesting. <laughs> Yeah, put me on the spot. Okay, um, I thought that that the videos were were extremely revealing. It was actually very surprising considering the the like tone of silence that we've had over the entire production. I thought that the timing was just really interesting, and I was trying to you know look for a hidden meaning. But one of the things I took away, as Savannah had said, was the absolute enthusiasm, and energy that he has for the material because. You know, I felt that if, if he translated that into uh, the film itself, that the film is going to have this very interesting pace. And, you know, and I felt that, that I got a real sense that he understood the material the way I was hoping that he would understand it and that, that he was focusing on the stuff that I was hoping that he would focus on. So from the interviews themselves, I thought that was really gratifying. And then on top of that as well, Steven Soderbergh went public about his, uh, his experience this week. It was just great from a technical standpoint about the insights that we had between the dynamics of these guys and how it was going to work. Yeah. Uh, Teresa, do you want to step in and, and add to that? Sure. Um, I mean, I agree. I mean, I loved his enthusiasm. I was like, it just made me so much, I mean, I'm, of course, already excited, but it made me so much more excited just to hear him talk about um, the film. And I loved when he said, you know, he wasn't going to spoil his own, there's things he could say, but he wasn't going to spoil his own movie um, when he was talking about the dress and stuff, So, um, which I absolutely love that. But um, I'm happy to have um, confirmed that uh, they are going to have a bit of the changing perspectives um, I mean, I know we had heard about that, you know, from filming. They were talking about filming different things, um, District 11 and things like that, but getting to, you know, have confirmation that, you know, we're going to see things um, from, as an you know, where we feel like we're the audience member, where they pull back and we become um, the capital audience, really. And I was hoping um, – that, you know, that wouldn't be the major thing. Um, and he did say, you know, it was going to mostly focus on, you know, we're mostly going to be with Katniss, which is good. But it's nice to know that we will have that that chance to pull back and go, hey, wait a second. You know, we're watching this on a screen just like, you know, they do in the Capitol. We're seeing things and, um, you know, kind of pull back and react to it that way, um, which is something that Suzanne said a long time ago that she wanted um, to do when she did the Borders interview um, in between when Catching Fire was released. And she had said she wanted to be able to do that. So um, I was really, really happy to hear that. And I think the whole um, just getting to hear um, little tidbits here and there of, of different things, um, you know, and, and I mean, who, I mean, who else, you know, now the only, I, I want to see Stanley Tucci. That's all, you know, it's like right now after he said that, I'm like, okay, you know, now that you said that, we need a tease here. We need to see him as Caesar because um, everybody keeps talking about what amazing job he's doing, or he, you know, he, that he did. And so it's like, give, you know, now give a Caesar. That's the one I want to see next. <laughs> right. 
Okay, great. Um, I actually, I have a lot of opinions, but I want to let everybody else speak. Um, and maybe we should let one of our newcomers, let's ask Jake Vineyard, who hasn't really had much opportunity to speak. And remember, Jake is 12. A lot of that conversation he had earmuffs on for for that Romeo and Juliet <laughs> discussion. But uh, I'm just I'm just kidding, Jake. Jake, what did you think of uh, of the Gary Ross interview and really the the teaser in general since you're on the show? Um, I think that well, it was definitely um, it gave us like confidence that it would be, you know, like he just felt happy about it. So then that would, you know. So his his positive at- attitude inspires confidence in you. You would say. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I mean, you can tell that he loves the source material, um, which I think was very refreshing to see, for me anyway. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, no, definitely. Let's see, who else have we got here? Let's go to the famous Shyla Adante and get her professional opinion on this matter. Everything that comes out of Gary Ross's mouth just makes me fall in love with him a little more. You know, from the beginning when we got we started to get these casting announcements to, you know, the little script revelations that we got along the way and now this interview, I mean, to me he can do no wrong with this movie. I feel like he's a fan of the material, he's gonna be loyal to the messages, um, that I think are, are at the heart of the book and that, you know, with everything that he tells us it's just it, things just keep getting better and better and better. So I love him. Yeah, I have to say it. He's a great uh, spokesperson. Really should just maybe do all of their PR because he's just so <laughs> erudite and well-spoken uh, and, and has a calm voice. I mean, <laughs> there's nothing well, else. Really. After all. It's, uh, it ends in like, what time is it? Yeah. So let's ask. Uh, let's go over to, uh, to keep on Natalie Zuder from Crushable. And Natalie, I know you see a lot of trailers and a lot of teasers in the course of your job. Um, but uh, did yeah. Gary Ross give you a little cause to think that this is going to be better than others? You mean from the the videos he was doing? The, right. The movie. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, I actually only saw um, the second one. The, I think the one about the shifting perspectives, and I was excited. I mean, he seemed really excited to be talking about the project, and and yeah, it was just hearing. I mean, I have been gunning this whole time to have multiple perspectives, and to get. And so there was a moment when he said something like, you know, sometimes you're going to see through the other. Because I, I said, you know, the whole time I said, okay, we have to see from the capital's point of view. You know, the people watching on the TV. But he also said, you know, in some shots you're going to see through the eyes of the other tributes as Katniss pops out, like the way that they're maybe stalking her or the way she just pops out and surprises them in the scene. And so I got really excited about that because I thought that's going to bring us, you know, a whole other dimension that we didn't have in the books. Because in the books it was just always Katniss thinking, you know, they're on me, they're going to find me, what am I going to do? And here we'll see, you know, the other tributes dealing with Katniss or maybe having that same, of, oh, my God, there's Katniss. Is she coming after me? So I feel like it will be a more well-rounded experience, and I have to respect Gary Ross for, like, thinking that far in a spot that at least this fan hadn't considered. So, yeah, I'm I'm feeling pretty good about it after those, those videos he's been doing. It sound, sounds like the reaction has, has been pretty positive. And honestly, what has Gary Ross done, at least in a publicity uh role that's been negative. I can't really think of anything up to this point. So, you know, look, we'll, we'll wait to see the movie, obviously, but I think it, in his uh, leading up to the movie, in the the, the training rounds, if, this, if he were being interviewed by Cesar Flickerman, I think we'd say he's succeeding with flying colors. Uh, let me ask <laughs> Sarah over in, in Portland. Sarah, is that, would you say that's an accurate statement, or do you have a bone to pick with uh, Mr. Uh, Ross? No, I'd I'd agree with that. My only, I don't know, I feel like I'm one of the only people who's going, who's approaching this film very cautiously because I'm excited about it and I'm I'm hopeful and optimistic about it. But 
I don't know, there's a part of me that fears it could be totally awful and it could bomb, and part of me worries that all this, like, pre-release hype is only going to make it, like, worse, that everyone's expectations are going to be raised even more, but maybe that's just me being neurotic. <laughs> um, so I try to approach it cautiously, but everything I've heard and seen from, from Gary Ross and from Suzanne Collins and everyone else involved so far, everything I've heard and seen makes me feel very good about it. There's just a part of me that still, like, is trying to be not too overly, I don't know, anticipatory about it. Yeah, I actually think that's a pretty wise approach because, I mean, it was kind of like that with the Golden Compass because they made such a huge production out of um, doing that open casting call and, you know, auditioning but thousands and thousands of girls the <laughs> to find the perfect <laughs> library. And those books are so good. <laughs> right, right. And the, and the trailer, I remember loving the trailers. I, I saw the trailers exactly. and was like, I had goosebumps, and then the film came out, and it was like, oh, my God. I, I mean, those are you like. You know what movie's of... bad when even the director hates it? <laughs> <laughs> well, and see, and I kind of use Golden Compass as my cautionary tale with this one because I, those right. are probably my all time favorite books. And the author was involved heavily in the production of it, and they had a fantastic cast. And every footage and clip I'd seen from it looked so good. And then the movie came out, and it was awful, and I try to forget that it ever happened. So, I mean, it's kind of the question you tell it. You can have all the right elements, but something can still go wrong sometimes. So, and, and just as the little, like, red flag, you know, that was the Lionsgate movie. So it does give me pause, but, um, but everything I've seen so far for Hunger Games, I do really like. So I'm hopeful, but I'm also a little, a little wary about it still. <laughs> 